Hello, hello, YouTubers. Uh, this video is going to be uh, a comparison uh, of a uh, of cob compared to water as thermal mass um, and the advantages. Um, I want to point out that uh, water has a heat capacity of 1.0. That is according to Google and all scientific information known to the world. Uh, check it out. Heat capacity list. Materials heat. Capacity materials list. Cobb bench, heat capacity of 0.2. That means water is five times a better thermal mass, stores more energy than does cob. And that is pound for pound. However, cob is more dense than water. Its molecules are more tightly compacted. It's more dense. Uh, to show that it's more dense, cob weighs 95 pounds a square foot. Water only weighs 64 pounds a square foot. And a square foot, or a cubic foot, I'm sorry, I should be saying cubic foot there. And a cubic foot of, uh, uh, cubic foot of uh, water, there's a little over seven gallons, so it's about 64 pounds. The density factor changes the heat capacity advantage from a factor of five times down to just a factor of three times because it is more dense. So the Cobb advantage is 3.26 times more heat than, uh, than, than the water. I'm sorry, the water is more than cob. Now, here's what I know. It takes 1,334 BTUs to heat one gallon of water from 40 degrees to 200 degrees. If I took that 1,334 and multiply it times a 55-gallon drum, I'm going to say 77,000 BTUs is available in a, in a 55 gallon drum size barrel of water. The same 55 gallon drum filled with cob with a heat capacity of 0.2 is going to hold 22,000 BTUs. It's a factor of about 3.2 less times. Now let's look how that heat dissipation works out over time. Cob is more of an insulator than water. How do I know that? Well, I can tell that by heat capacity. So will cob on the internal stay warm longer than water on the internal? Yes. Why? Because water will conduct the electricity immediately out to the outer perimeters and dissipate it. Cob is more of an insulator. Proof in the pudding. Scientific charts all over the world. So the cob on the inside heats up, the cob around it works more as an insulator to prevent that heat from getting out. So it's more of an insulator than water is. That's why you can only get 22,000 BTUs in it, in a 55 gallon drum size of it, okay? So, now, I'm not saying that these are the losses, right? I'm not saying that these are, this is how it loses. I'm showing you the relationship of the numbers. This is how it worked. I just used, so I figured up 77,000 BTUs for a 55 gallon. Now over a three hour period, I'm figuring this doesn't even matter how much it will lose, it would be in direct proportion. So if my numbers are slightly off, it's still going to be the same relationship. If water lost a little bit more or less, or cob lost a little bit more or less, these numbers will still have the same relationship. So what I just did is I said over a three hour period, if I lose 50% of what I've got, right, I've got 11K left and I dropped and a, a, a dissipation rate of 3,606.6 BTUs per hour. And the, each of the first three hours, that's the BTUs you get. Over here, 77,000 BTUs. Over the first hour, since this lost half of it in three hours, if this loses it in proportion to which it has the advantage, which would be a factor of three, then over one hour, instead of being three hours, this one would actually lose uh, half of it. So over the first hour, this one would deliver 38,000 BTUs for 38,000 BTUs of storage for the first hour, as compared to 3,666 for the first hour. Okay? Now, by the time you get to the third hour on the cob, you're still at 3,666. Okay? but you've only released a total of 11K. When you get to the third hour on the water, 
Uh, you've got 9.5 dissipated, 9.5K, you're still dissipating, 9.5K, 9.5 thousand BTUs in that hour versus just the third hour. So how long does it take for the cob catches up? Well, let's look at the second hour. The second drop. So let's just say this is a three hour drop. This is what it come to. And then another three hour drop. And this is what it would come to. It'd be in that second three hour drop, you got 11,000. You got 11,000. Right? Now, if you dropped 3,666 per hour in six hours, that would be at zero. You would be at zero. And I can prove that by. I've got 366 here for three hours. That would be three times 366, and 366 times uh, three uh, for, for three hours here. So that would be three. It would be 366.6 times six would be 21,966, which is right at my 22,000 original BTUs. So I know that that's approximate. That's really close. Okay. <clears throat> so time I get to the uh, this is a three-hour period. This is the second three-hour period. So the second be the sixth hour, I'm getting still getting 3,666 uh, BTUs. Over here on the water. On the water, the first hour I delivered 38,000 BTUs. Way over the 11,000 BTUs that the cob used. Yeah. The second hour, I delivered 19,000. I lost the second hour, I'm going to lose half, dissipate half, and keep half for the next hour. Because every, every slot here, I'm going into 50%, right? So the second hour, you've, uh, you've, you've uh, used that, you dissipate 19,000. On the third hour, you're only dissipating 9.5. Well, on the third hour, you're still dissipating more than the, than the cob. On the, uh, on the fourth hour, you're only dissipating 4.25. Well, on the fourth hour, you're still dissipating more than cob because your total was larger to stay up to, uh, to begin with. On the fifth hour, you're just you're just dissipating 2.12k over here. So it takes on the fifth hour in the cob. So in the fifth hour on the cob, you finally catch up with the water. But. Everything that happened before that fifth hour, the water blows the cob out of the water by a factor of 3.26 times. Okay? And this is from 40 to 200 degrees, meaning that it takes 1,334 BTUs to heat one gallon of water from 40 to 200 degrees. Okay. So, uh, And how would you slow this down even more? Is there a way to slow this down even more? Is there a way to increase this or slow this down? And which one? Is it easier to increase this capacity or slow this one down? Well, it's a whole lot easier to slow this one down than it is to try to bring this heat capacity up. Because the only way you're going to bring this heat capacity up that's even in the realm of imagination is going to be, oh, well, not imagination, that's a little bit far, because some of you guys got pretty good ones of those. Realistically, water is going to be the only way you're going to raise this. Okay? You're going to need water to bring your total up over your 22,000 to start with. You got 77,000. If you got a, a thousand square foot house, you're going to need about 50,000 BTUs. This almost completely heats the whole house the second hour. This one, well, we, this one only lacks what, 12,000 BTUs from, <coughs> from heating the whole house. Uh, second hour here, uh, It likes about uh, 44,000 BTUs from heating the whole house. So that's quite a significant difference there. So again, and how easy is it to change this or make this or to slow this down? Well, it's, it's really easy. Um, this represents a drum with insulation around it. Simple insulation. How about a blanket? How about two blankets? How about some uh, 
fiberglass insulation. How about fiberglass insulation on the top part of this, just over the top half? Just leave some at the bottom exposed. You think that would slow it down? I think that's an easy way to slow it down to keep your high total of total BTUs and not sacrifice the time. Let's, let's sacrifice the time here with a little insulation and not bring in a bunch of mud and sand and stuff into our house and have to pile it up in great big piles because you'd have to have three 55-gallon drums to equal this one over here. So let's not bring extra mud and all that in, right? Wouldn't it be just more simple just to have a tank with a little insulation around it? How about, how about, a, uh, how about a tank or a 55-gallon drum inside of a closet? with a vent where you could bring air in, bring air out, and you could even do it with forced air. Now, you guys keep saying, well, your system requires electricity. That's a problem. That's a problem. No, that's a problem for you guys. I have solved that problem. I make electricity for free when I make heat through the use of thermoelectrics. I have 100-watt modules, okay? They can produce 100 watts right off the side of the wood stove. That's another subject that I'm going to get into. However, back to the point. A closet with styrofoam insulation, with vents in and out of it, would easily slow this down. You'd open that vent and close it upon your knee. You could have forced air pushing that air out of it. You could have just regular insulation around your drum, and you could pipe that or plummet to a dissipation point. You could use your thermoelectrics to get it there so it's all still free. Or, God forbid, you could just put a little cob over the top of your drum, and you could actually insulate your drum with a little bit of cob. So, a traditional rocket mass heater that only uses cob is inferior to a rocket mass heater that uses water and cob for a mass. Uh, the cob is not as important as the water because the water is what gives you your high totals. The mass is just an insulator. The cob is just an insulator. The water is what gives you high totals. The cob is just, a, it's just an insulator. You can't get that much in there. Because this is so much higher, even though this is losing it faster, it takes four or five hours before this to catch up. Six hours, this is, if, you, if you radiate this much in six hours, after six hours, you're at zero here. I'm, I'm all the way down to six hours here, and I'm still dissipating 1K, and I'm not quite done yet. Hmm. So, is the determining factor on building better stoves uh, in choosing a, a mass? Is that determining factor? Uh, what's it based on? How slow Cobb loses heat and not three times the total? Is it Cobb loses heat slower, more relevant to us building stoves than it takes five hours to catch up? Is your Cobb total, if you can't reach this total, can't this easily be slowed down, easily be slowed down to lengthen out this time? Okay, guys, I, uh, I think this is a pretty good explanation, and these are pretty good ex considerations on what you should be thinking about when, and how you should be thinking about it when considering building a heating system. I'm in the pursuit, and a lot of us are in the pursuit, of just a better stove design, better heating system. I don't care if it's a stove design. I don't care what aspects of it you improve, just as long as it's a better heating system. Water, as a thermal mass compared to cob, is a better heating system. Thanks for watching.